Welcome to part 2 in our tutorial series on how to develop a Contras like game with Free Visual Engine G Develop. Let's check what we have done in the previous video. If you remember we have created a ground and a player character, and we have been able to make the character move right and left with its animations. But if we tried to jump, the character would jump but in idle state and not playing a jump animation. Before jumping into it, just make a check on some of the main mechanics with the player character in game. Let's test drive Contra. So, we are able to shoot horizontally. We can run to the left and we know that to the right too. We are able to jump. When the character jumps, he goes into a roll. This means that we will be meeting later on an animation for the jump roll. We are able to lie on the ground if we press the down key. And if we press the down key plus the jump key we perform a jump down from the platform where the player is currently located. Apart from shooting horizontally we can also shoot vertically and in an angle of 45 degrees. We can check also that there isn't an auto fire and we need to press the key for each time we want to shoot a bullet. Let's make a small summary of the main actions that we have to develop with their current status and that will allow us to check on the progress. First thing first. Let's make the character jump with its corresponding animation. For this, we need to double click on the character or, go to the objects menu and click on our player. Once there, click on the add animation button to add a new animation. Click on the add button and in the explorer go to the folder where you have downloaded your sprites and search for the jump animations. Once uploaded, since we are using an animation which only purpose is to be played while jumping, we don't need to click on the loop option. But we need to preview the animation and set the frames per second to 6, as we have done for the other animations. Click OK to finish the animation and apply to close the object properties. Now, in order to trigger the animation, we need to go the event window. On the search bar, type key and select the key pressed and then in the key dialog the space button, or the button that you want to use for the jump. Press OK to close, and now let's create the action associated with the player. Click on the add action and then choose the player. Type animation on the search, and in this case, just to showcase other options to play animations, instead of using the change animation by name, let's use the change animation. In the dialog modification sign choose the function set, and then in the value field type in the value of the animation index. In our case, by mistake we have entered 3 when it should be 2, but we will get it amended later on. The number that is introduced is the index number that you can find in the character properties near the animation's name. Here. Let's fix now the index. And by way but a name to the animation. Although we are not using it. It is always a good practice to name things in games development. It helps keeping some order when the project starts to grow. Let's check the animation while jumping. Cool. I think that it works well. Let's try now to add some platforms to exercise the jump and check on the jump on off a platform. Before moving on, let's check on what we have done, and what is still needed to be done. Movement check. Idle check. Jump up check. First thing to do, is to create the object and then to add a nice sprite for it. Now, that you have selected the sprite, let's add a behavior to it and make it interactable with the character. Go to behaviors and on the top of the list you can see the platform behavior. Select it to add it. Since we want it to be a platform, we want the player to be able to jump through and on the platform, so in the field type, choose the jump through platform. Click apply to exit the window and run the game.
We can see that we can jump through the platform, but unfortunately, our current jump height is too low to be able to get to the top of the platform and land on it. Go back to the scene view. Select the player character and double click on it. Go to behaviors and look for the jump speed and boost it up. In our case we will try 600. Click apply and run the game. Now we can see that the player is able to jump higher and land correctly on the platform. Let's try to move out of the platform. Wait, is it a bird? No. Is it Superman? No. It is a character with the collision detection too big and that dude to it is walking in mid-air. Let's take a note to fix this later on. We can also see, that when falling, the character is still walking which looks really odd. Let's fix this right away. Go the events tab, and then create a new event. For the condition select the player object and then look for falling. Add the is falling condition. and then as action let's change again the animation. For simplicity, we can use the jump one. Run the game, and it will still think that he is a bird, but as soon as he ran out of collider he falls with the jump animation posture. Okay, so we have a jump through and on a platform. But if you remember, Contra has also a jump down or off the platform. How can we implement something like this? If you look at all the behaviors, you will see that there isn't any mode to enable a jump through down a platform. So, we need to implement it? The way as it works in Contra is, if while pressing the down button you press the jump button too, then the character will fall through the platform. Falling through something in games is usually by disabling a collision or a behavior. So this means that we need to detect when the player is pressing both down and jump buttons as to disable the platform behavior and let the character falling through. There is a problem here. Based on the architecture used by GDevelop, the internal events from the platformer character behavior will always ran before our own events. This means, that if we try to press both the down and the jump button at the same time, the character will always jump. To avoid this and let us control the way the system works, we need to avoid using the controls directly, but instead using another option that is called simulate control. This will allow us to actually perform checks before acting on them. So, let's start by changing the events that we introduced in the previous video, and take out from the condition the internal condition is moving. Now in the action, enter a new action with the simulate control, and in the key field enter the key that you want to simulate, so for now in our case right left jump. Run the game again to make sure that nothing is broke. It is a good practice in games development to test out frequently the code, as to guarantee that if you have a critical problem that forces you to go back in the coding, you don't actually do back to a very old version. Let jump back to the events tab and add the new conditions. Let jump back to the events tab and add the new conditions. We are going to check for the down key pressed, and then add another condition and check to see if the jump button is also pressed.
For the action, select the platform and then search for activate behavior and turn off the behavior as the entry condition specifies that we want to disable the propriety. Since we want this to work when touching a platform, let's add another condition to make sure that the player character is actually in contact with a platform. What action should we put? Easy, select the platform object, and choose the deactivate behavior, and then in the button to define if you are trying to enable or disable it. Now, if you run the game, and try to jump of the platform, you can see that everything works correctly. If you press both the down and jump button, then the character falls through the platform. In this case it is moving behind the platform, but we will fix it in a future episode. Try to jump again on the top of the platform. What is happening? Yes, the problem that we have, is that we have disabled the platform behavior, which means that all the features associated with it are no longer there. To avoid that situation, what we need to implement is a new event, where we tell GDevelop to enable back the behavior if the player is no longer in contact with the platform. Let's check everything, and we can see that we can jump on and off a platform all the times that we want. Now, Time to fix the Superman syndrome and avoid to have the character walking over the platform limit and in mid-air. To fix it, we need to go to the player object properties, and then in the bottom of the dialog box, you will be able to find two buttons, one for the hitboxes or colliders and the other one for images points. Click in the hitboxes, and you will be presented with a new window with the player character surrounded by a reddish box. A couple of drop-down buttons with the names of the animations, and then a couple of sliders enabled with the options on how to apply changes through the animations. At the bottom of the window, you can find a new button that says use a custom collision mask. Let's click on this last button, and we are taken to a new interface with the character not surrounded by a red shape, which means without collisions. More or less at the middle of the screen, you have a huge plus sign. If you click on it, you can see, that by default GDevelop creates a frame around the player, with four dots marking the limits of the collision. You can drag the points, by click them and dragging them around, anywhere you want to define around the character a collision shape smaller than what was specified. In a perfect world, it should work immediately, but in, in a world of betas, the custom collision mask is actually failing to detect the collisions with the platform. We have tried to find a solution but up to the time of uploading we were not able to find the cause for the malfunction and we had to restore the collision to its default states by pressing the button with restore the default collision. So by now we have implemented all these features. We still have some to implement, so in the next video we will start to shoot. Up to then. Thanks for watching. I hope that you have liked this video. If yes, consider subscribing, giving a like and clicking on the notification button. If you have any question, problem or comment, don't hesitate in putting a comment and we will answer as fast as we could. Not certainly as fast as Superman, but at a pretty decent speed. See you in the next video gamey developers.